Okay, let's dive right into it straight away. For those of you guys that like to follow people like Jim Rohn or Tony Robbins or other motivational speakers, you may have heard the statement, success leaves clues. Um, Well, I want to spin off of that a little bit and title this podcast, Miracles Leave Clues. Uh, The more miracles I read about in the Bible, the more miracles I read about in uh, biographies, autobiographies, uh, the more miracles I see or watch, I'm a witness to, uh, the more miracles that the Lord allows me to be a part of, the more I learn because miracles leave clues. And I want to take just a few moments of your time while you're driving down the road, running on the treadmill, uh, laying in bed, sitting on the couch. I don't know what you're doing while you're listening to this episode, but I want to take a few minutes to share with you the clues that the miracles I've witnessed and watched uh, and studied have left me. And I hope it encourages you. But before I get too far into it, I want to share with you a, an, an experience that I had. I was speaking at at, um, Cross Church in Huma, Louisiana this past weekend. And uh, we were going for healing and the entire weekend was awesome. 63 people got healed uh, throughout the services. It was phenomenal. And I am so thankful. I'm so thankful to God that he has allowed me to be a part of Um, this partnership, I should say, that he's allowed me to be a part of these moments. I've been praying for them, um, fasting for them for for a long, long time. And it is, I am so grateful that the Lord has allowed me to partner with him in these areas of healings and miracles. But uh, this one particular moment, uh, (laughs) I probably will never forget for the rest of my life. Um, I, I was, uh, I was in the, they have four services. The church is absolutely exploding. If you live in the Huma area, it is exploding. They have four weekend services cross church of Huma, Louisiana, but nevertheless, um, I was, uh, was, it's with pastor Brandon and Rochelle Bilbo, by the way, but nevertheless, I, uh, I was, um, I was speaking and, uh, about 33 people had been healed so far in that particular service. It was their fourth service of the weekend. And all of a sudden it was on the, this guy was like on the third, fourth, maybe fifth row. He just yells out. He just yells out. I'm not a big fan of, of people yelling out, but you know, thankfully it hasn't happened, um, ever in my life, uh, I want to say ever with an asterisk, because in the last 21 years, <laughs> I have been a part of services where weird things have happened, but nobody has ever yelled at me the way he did. He yelled at me and he said, hey, preacher, I need a miracle, man. And I just looked at him and um, he said, look, I've got a torn rotator cup. Now keep in mind, he's, he's yelling this. Okay. Um, so people, the, the, everybody in the crowd can hear him. He goes, I have a torn rotator cup and my muscles are not attached and I am in pain all the time. I need a miracle. And I looked at him and I smiled and I said, you know, I've been I've been doing this thing we call ministry for a while now. Um, I don't think I mentioned it, but I think it's like 21 or 22 years. I've been doing this for a while and I've never had somebody so bold to yell and say, I need a miracle the way you are right now. And I'm just going to tell you, because you are so bold, you're going to get your miracle. You're going to get it right now. I said, come on down here to the front. And so he came out of his seat and he came down to the stage area. And I I said, hey, would it, and I looked at the crowd, I said, would it help your faith? Would it help you believe in God more and believe in miracles more if you saw this guy receive his healing right now? And I said, raise your hand. So obviously hands go up all over the, the sanctuary. And I said, would it, would it cause you to praise 
the name of Jesus more? Would you love that if, if you were capable, would you, your faith and your love and your admiration, would you praise Jesus more, glorify him more? If you were to see this man get healed right now and, uh, and, and obviously everybody raised their hands and I had this just for a split second. I mean, it was quick. It was fast. I had this thought just cross my mind, bring him on the stage so everybody can see. And as quickly as I had that thought, I had this other thought. No, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And so I just, I figured I was already in it anyway. So I brought him on the stage. I want you to come up here on the stage so everybody can see your healing. And uh, so he came up there and I, I laid my hand on his, on his uh, right shoulder. And it was a simple prayer. I said, Lord, um, for your glory, for the name, for the glory of the name of Jesus, I just, I just pray right now that uh, every bone, um, every muscle, every tendon would just be healed and be made whole right now. Be made whole. And I just spoke a simple command. Be whole in Jesus' name. And um, I was prepared to pray two times, three times, four times more. Um, but I, I just said, hey, take your hand. T- try to do something you couldn't do before. And so with his, his hand, his right hand around his pocket, just resting on his side, he began to, to lift it up towards uh, almost like lateral to the floor. And so he started lifting it up, 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 up. Up, and then his hand uh, was parallel to the floor, and then it started going up past his shoulder and started going up higher and higher and higher and higher. And now, as his hand was going up higher, his eyes started get it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And now I didn't know what he could do before we prayed. You know, I didn't say. You know, I didn't. I, I you know, I just met this guy, so I'm looking at him for him to tell us at what point can you now do something you couldn't do before. So he's got his arm now straight up in the air, like his shoulder is touching his right ear. And so then he pushes it all the way over to where his hand is now wrapped around his head and he's touching his left ear and he goes, oh my goodness, oh my, I, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh I cannot, oh my goodness. And, and of course, everybody in the church, including myself, we're ecstatic and, and I am just so grateful and I'm just thinking to myself, Jesus, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for proving to us that you still do miracles. And um, there's a, a few scriptures that are coming to my mind right now that that I want to share with you. I didn't share it with the church. I was just celebrating with the church. But um, uh, in First Thessalonians chapter one verse five, Paul says, "When we came to you to share the good news, we didn't just come with words, but we came in power for the Holy Spirit confirmed within you that what we were saying was true." And and in that moment, it was like the Holy Spirit is confirming that uh, what that God still moves that the Holy Spirit still moves and so I was just so excited another scripture that came to mind is in Acts chapter 14 verse 3 it says that the disciples preached the gospel of grace boldly and the Lord proved that what they were saying was true by giving them the power to do signs, wonders, and miracles. And so uh, it was just a great moment where we got to see the power of God move. And uh, so I want to just take just, uh, I don't want to take, I'm I'm looking at the clock right now and see how far I've I've been going. And um, I'm wanting to pay attention because I don't want this episode to last too long, but I want it, I want it to last long enough to where I can encourage you. And so uh, let me share a a few thoughts uh, regarding faith. Uh, First of all, for those of you that knew, uh, that are new to the podcast, new to the faith, um, faith is being sure of what you are hoping for. I know that sounds like an oxymoron. You can read about this in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. Faith is being sure of what you are hoping for and certain of what you cannot see. You can't see it, but you're certain. That's faith. Um, 
uh, in that moment on the stage, um, the Lord blessed me and blessed the other people in the room um, with a certainty that he was about to be healed. That is faith. Uh, I'm certain of what I'm hoping is going to happen. And, um, and so that's what faith is. Uh, now, I want to remind you that if you are listening to this episode and, and you're questioning the level of faith that you have, I want you to know whatever uh, what Jesus can use the amount of faith you have to do mighty, mighty things. So don't ever think to yourself, well, uh, I don't have enough faith, so therefore there's going to, you know, no miracles are going to be happening in my life because I don't have enough faith. Um, Just two scriptures to throw at you. In Mark chapter 9, there's somebody that, that actually said to Jesus, if you can heal my son, if you can, he wasn't even sure if he could or not, if you can heal my son and Jesus did heal his son. And then in Mark chapter one, somebody else came up and said, if you are willing to heal my son, um, if you're willing, no, actually it was the leper in Mark chapter one is, uh, if you are willing to heal. And so uh, one person didn't even know if Jesus could. The next person uh, knew that he could, but didn't know if, if Jesus would do it for them. And, and I just find that so amazing that God uses whatever amount of faith that we have. Having said that, it is in our best interest to increase the level of faith we have. Every day we live, we should be thinking, how can I increase my faith? Because faith is in Indeed, a catalyst for miracles. Yes, God will use the amount of faith that we have, but the more faith a person has, the more likely they'll receive what they're believing for. An atmosphere of faith compels God to move. And so if you're in a church that believes in miracles, it compels God to move. And Jesus works within those atmospheres more often than he works in atmospheres where there is no faith. And so uh, this is the the points that I want to to bring out. Um, I want to talk about revelation and I want to talk about experience because those are the two things that cause our faith to grow, revelation and experience, okay? So let's talk about revelation first. Revelation comes through prayer. Evan Roberts, He's the guy that, just a young guy, 25 years old, uh, he was the gentleman that the Lord used to usher in the Wales revival. He said this, prayer is the secret of power. And so often we want faith to increase. We want power to be manifested in our lives. But we have to remember that it's prayer that ignites those moments. In John chapter 1, Uh, John received the revelation of who Jesus was. And the the more we understand who Jesus is and his heart, the more we will see his heart manifested around us. I love John chapter one. I've, I've committed it to memory because it's so revelatory on who Jesus is. Um, Jesus, another name for Jesus is the word capital W the word. And it says, in the beginning, the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were created through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. The life of man was within him and that life was the light of man and the light shined in the darkness and the darkness could not comprehend it. See, when we begin to understand through revelation and prayer and memorizing scripture, though that's what causes, that, that's the, the breeding ground of revelation of who God is. And once you have a revelation, nobody can ever take that revelation away. It is alive. It is living. It is active. It is, it is something that you know like you know your name. 
And when you start treading on grounds where you're memorizing scripture and you're praying and you're praying and you're memorizing scripture in my personal life, uh, I go into my prayer time with the scriptures that I'm memorizing. And so I'm praying and then I'm memorizing the scripture and then I'm praying and then I'm memorizing the scripture. They they go hand in hand now. Um, And so revelation comes through that. And then here's the other key. Uh, Revelations. A revelation of who God is. Not only does it come through prayer, memorizing scripture, but the key is, is remaining in him. Um, if you go to Celebration Church, you've heard me uh, preach about this. Uh, when we're in the sanctuary and we're singing, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And we have such an awesome worship team. It's so easy to get caught up in his presence and worshiping him on a Sunday morning. But when we walk out, the key is, is to stay connected. Stay connected to him. Remain in him on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That is so key because in John 15, 7, it says, but if you remain in me and my words, in other words, memorize it and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. So often we memorize scriptures like Mark 9, 23, where it says, if you believe all things are possible, but we ignore scriptures where our responsibility has to be present, where we remain in him and we memorize his words, then we can see one scripture doesn't operate without the other. And so the first thing, faith is built upon revelation. But number two, faith is built upon experience. Experience. See, um, zip lining. I don't know if you've ever been zip lining. The very first time I ever went zip lining, I was mad to be zip lining. My kids were, Daddy, please, Daddy, please, Daddy, please. I'm like, why? Why do I want to put this harness that embarrasses me to wear and, and clip myself on, on what looks to be telephone wires and throw myself off of this deck that's 50 feet in the air and zip across this, this wire that's a thousand feet long just so that I can do it. I, my life is exciting with my feet on the ground. Why do I need to zip myself across this wire just so I can be a thousand feet away from what I am right now? I was scared to death and angry that I was doing it. Angry about the harness I was wearing, angry about the, the helmet that was too big on my head that kept falling over my eyes, angry that the guy that was telling me to clip on was this long haired hippie looking dude saying, dude, it's going to be sweet, man. You're going to love it. No, man, I'm going to love being on the ground. But nevertheless, he clips me on and, and I was afraid and zip, I go, uh, I was just afraid. But I, because I had no confidence in, in the, uh, in the, in the line, no confidence in the apparatuses. I had no confidence in it. By the time I did it like two or three times, it, it started getting boring because I knew that the zip line was going to carry me. I knew that the harness was going to carry me. I knew I was going to be okay. Uh, my faith in the process and the experience was there because I have already done it. And when you do something, your faith increases. If you look at a wobbly chair at a barbecue, you're like, I don't know if I want to sit in that chair or not. I might fall. And then you sit in the chair. And even though it looks wobbly, it's, it's, it's as strong um, as an ox. Um, and, and now you have faith in the chair. How, When you looked at the chair, you had no faith, but when you sat on it and experienced it, now you have faith. See, faith comes through experiences. The more you experience something, the more you have faith in it. Somebody who's 40 years old, who's never been on an airplane, may be scared to death. By the time they're 50 years old and they've been on a plane 500 times, they're not nervous at all. They're not even thinking about taking off. They're not even thinking about the thoughts that they used to have. Why? Do they have faith in the plane? Yes. How did they get faith? Through experience. Experiences. So experiences build your faith. Revelations build your faith. Experiences build your faith. And so when you get around and when you have an opportunity to say, okay, let's see what God's going to do in this situation. Let's see what God's going to do in this situation. The more situations you see God come through on, the greater your faith becomes. Oftentimes God, oftentimes God will put us through seasons that are excruciating. 
But once we come out of them, we add that experience to the list of experiences that we've had in our life to say, hey, I've seen God get me through a financial struggle. I've seen God get me through a relational issue. I've seen God get me through a health issue. I've seen God get me through this. I've seen God get me through that. I've seen God get me through this. So all these experiences build your faith. So when somebody says to you, why do you believe in God? You have all of these personal testimonies that nobody can ever take away from you that these experiences built it. So now here's the deal. If you want to increase your faith, increase your experiences. And so I had somebody tell me recently, you don't spell faith the way you think you do. Faith is not spelt the way it sounds. Faith is spelt R-I-S-K, risk. So you have to be risky in order to have faith in particular areas especially in the areas of healing and miracles. Uh, when I called the guy on the stage, I, I ha- my faith was very, very high, very, very high. Why? Well, in that particular service, 33 people had just been healed. And so now this guy's saying, I want to be healed. Well, guess what? <laughs> I just saw 33 people get healed. Why wouldn't I believe that you're number 34? Uh, over the last year, um, I've been so grateful that the Lord has uh, allowed me to partner with him to see literally hundreds of people get healed. Hundreds, uh, hundreds of people that I've watched get healed and all I was was a spectator. I can't even count anymore over the last nine months how many people I've prayed for personally and saw a, a miracle. Um, I don't even know how many. It's, it's, I have no clue how many. It's become something that's norm. It's the normative. Um, I'm not surprised uh, when somebody gets healed. I'm not surprised when there's a miracle. I'm actually surprised when they don't get healed. And just so uh, I can make one balancing statement, everybody I pray for doesn't get healed. Um, it, you know, it's, it's not a thousand percent. And but what I have learned is, is that nobody is at fault. The, the person that's being prayed for isn't at fault. I'm not at fault. There's just a, a variable, an unknown variable that I just don't know um, uh, on why some people don't get healed. But this is what I do know. The more risks I take, the more I actively build my faith, the more scriptures I memorize, the more time. I spend in his presence, the more miracles I see. So I hope that this encourages you. If it has encouraged you, if this podcast has brought value to you, uh, do me a favor, make some comments, put some five stars or however you do it. Um, uh, Put some comments on there. Uh, Text the episode to your friend, post it on social media and and prayerfully uh, the Lord will uh, bless it and and encourage other people. If you want to go to FrankieMazapika.com, there might be some things there that may help you as well. All right. I love all of you. And uh, let's go do something special for God together. I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.